Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. At least 45 people have died after a bus accident in western Bulgaria with 12 children among the dead. The accident happened on a highway about 28 miles west of Sofia around 2 a.m. local time. TV footage shows the burnt out shell of the bus. Causes of the incident are still unclear, but it is possible the bus hit a highway barrier before catching fire. Another seven people jumped from the vehicle and were rescued with minor injuries. Wisconsin officials are set to charge the driver of an SUV car that crashed into a Christmas parade with five counts of intentional homicide. The suspect, a 39-year-old man, has been named as Darrell E. Brooks. Five people were killed and 48 injured in the incident, which was caught on camera by people watching the parade. Several vigils have been held to pay tribute to the victims. A wave of protests against COVID restrictions are continuing for the second week in Guadeloupe after France announced further restrictions, including the mandatory vaccination of health workers. Violence erupted in the city, leaving burnt-out vehicles and torched buildings. According to the French interior minister, during the protest there had been shots against police. He says the situation remains very difficult. There are fears that the prospect of an Israeli strike on Iran is growing after Prime Minister Naftali Bennett indicated the country would increase hostilities with the country. In a speech, he has described Iran as being at the most advanced stage of its nuclear program. Negotiations about nuclear programs are due to take place about reviving the 2015 deal which Donald Trump pulled America out of at the end of this month. The Chinese government says the controversy surrounding tennis star Peng Shui has been maliciously hyped up. Peng has become a matter of international concern after she posted a message on social media alleging China's former vice president sexually assaulted her. Since then, despite state media releasing pictures and footage of her, the Women's Tennis Association and Amnesty International have raised concerns over her well-being. Ethiopia's Prime Minister has said he will go himself to the front line to face rebels who are reported to be inching closer to the capital as civil war rages on. Abe Ahmed, who won the Nobel Peace Prize back in 2019, implied that Ethiopia's very existence was at stake. The year-long conflict with rebels from the Tigray region has led to a humanitarian crisis, with hundreds of thousands of people facing famine-like conditions in the north. Rebel forces claim they are advancing on at least four fronts towards the capital, Addis Ababa. Adolescent children in Kenya and Rwanda are now eligible to receive Pfizer COVID jabs as both countries kick off vaccination campaigns. Rwanda will be vaccinating children from the age of 12 and above, while Kenya is allowing those from the age of 15. Rwanda has the highest fully vaccinated population in East Africa, with over 20% of the total population. The rest of the region, including Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda, have vaccinated less than 10% of their total population. A Ghanaian man in New York has built what he calls the world's largest collection of African photography books. Paul Ninson's collection consists of more than 30,000 books, all collected since COVID began. He plans to bring them back to Ghana, where he wants to open a museum. Some of the publications date back 40 years and either contain images from Africa or taken by African photographers. Sometimes people see somebody like me differently. Why? Because the narrative which has been perpetrated for years has embroidered in the people's mind and that is what is affecting my country and my Africa and people like me. Why? Because we've left the space for so long for people to tell their stories and distribute their stories. And finally, a rare manuscript by physicist Albert Einstein is being sold in auction in Paris. The document, produced between 1913 and 1914, is expected to be sold with a stratospheric price tag since it's the inception of the general theory of relativity. It is one of the two surviving working documents that record the birth of Einstein's theory and it's made up of 54 pages explaining gravity. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.